Welcome to a Code Report Solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to the problem entitled Toy Box from the Hacker Earth February Circuits 2019 contest. The problem states you have N toys and M toy boxes. Initially, all boxes are empty and each box can contain only one toy. Each toy has a price and a box number assigned to it. If you want to choose a toy, you must put it in its assigned box and of course that box can't be used for any other toys. You need to choose some toys with their boxes such that the summation of their price is maximized and we need to find this maximum price. And the constraints for this problem are going to be N and M are going to be between 1 and 100. B is going to be between 1 and M, obviously. That's the box number. Can't be greater than the number of boxes. And P for each of our toys, the price is going to be between 1 and 100. So the constraints for this problem are going to be pretty uh, small. So we don't really need to worry about time complexity. So. Um, we don't really need to look at any um, examples. It's a really straightforward problem. The solution is basically just to construct an array or a vector or a list and to keep track of the maximum price for uh, that box for the corresponding toys. So uh, we basically just loop through all of our input uh, for each toy and its corresponding box. We set the uh, box sort of max so far equal to the maximum of uh, the current toy price and the maximum that we've seen up to this point and then once we finish that we just sum all those maximum prices and we return that value so we're going to go over four different language solutions starting with python so this is our smallest simplest and i think easiest to reason about um, because typically Python is. Uh, on our first line, we're reading in N and M, N being the uh, number of queries that we're going to have, or number of toys that we're going to have, and M is going to be the total number of boxes. Then we're going to construct a list to keep track of the maximum price that we can put in each box. Um, note that we're using m plus 1 because the uh, boxes are indexed at 1 not at 0 so we need an extra uh, spot here otherwise we'd have to modify the box numbers then we're looping through our n different toys reading in the price and the corresponding box that that toy would go in and then we're just setting uh, the current uh, maximum price for that corresponding box to be equal to the price of the current toy and the maximum price that we've seen so far. Note that these will all get initialized to have a uh, initial price of zero. And then once we finish this for loop, we just print out the sum of all the maximum prices in our list. Moving on to our Java solution, probably the ugliest of all of them, uh, as is typically the case. Um, we're doing the same as we did in the Python solution, reading in n and m, then declaring an array a to store our maximum prices. Then we're looping through, not with a ranged for loop, but with a while loop, decrementing n until it is equal to zero. And then we're reading in p, the price of our toy, b, the box that it's going to go in. And then once again, uh, setting the maximum price to be equal to the current price p, the maximum of the current price p, and the price that we've seen so far. And unfortunately, we don't have a nice sum function like we do in Python. They do in Java 8 have something called an int stream, which we should have been able to use, but for some reason the Hacker Earth uh, compiler wasn't really liking it. So instead, we're just hand rolling our own sort of local variable sum and then using an enhanced for loop to sum all the maximum prices. And once we've done this, we just output the value. Moving on to our third solution which is our C++ solution. Uh, very similar to the Python and Java solutions, obviously, reading in N and M, then declaring a vector uh, dimension to have M plus one elements. Uh, because we don't have uh, as strong typing in C++, we can just go while N minus minus. We don't need the does not equal zero. And then we can read in P and B. And once again, similar to both the Python and the Java solutions, we are setting the value or the price for our box to be the maximum of our current price P and the current maximum we've seen, uh, which is stored. And then uh, similar to Python, we have a sum function in C++. It's called accumulate in C++. 17 it would be called uh, reduce but we don't have c plus plus 17 on hacker earth um, and we're initializing our sum to be zero and uh, just looping through our whole vec vector and summing up the elements and returning it and our last but not least solution is go for the first time on this channel 
So at my day job, I've had to learn Go over the last couple days, so I figured I would include it in this video. Um, Go makes some very interesting language decisions and design choices. Um, specifically, we'll see here that they don't have a max function for integers. It's only for floats. Um, and so in order to use the built-in math function, we would have to convert our integers to floats and then uh, take the result of our max and convert it back to an integer because it's a pretty strongly typed language and it doesn't have implicit conversions. Um, and it also doesn't have a sum or a sort of a reduce or an accumulate function. So we have to hand roll both the max and the accumulate or sum function here. Um, but anyways, walking through the solution, uh, we're initializing our n, m, p, and b up top. It has uh, initialization by default, so these are all initialized to zero because that's the default value for integers. We're reading in n and m here. On our third line, we're declaring what's called a slice. If you're familiar with um, the upcoming C++ 20 span, uh, a slice in Go is, is, has the same idea. They're not identical, um, but it's sort of, or if you're familiar with the C++ 17 string view uh, versus string, that's what a slice is. So when you go make and you have a left bracket, right bracket, int, you're basically declaring a slice of size and capacity m plus one and then behind the scenes it allocates an array so uh, this would be the equivalent in c plus plus of having sort of a span and then it behind the scenes would declare like a vector to store um, so then we're going to loop through all of our toys read in p and b our price and our box for each of them uh, use our hand rolled sort of maximum to reset uh, the maximum price if necessary and then once we've done that to loop through all the elements uh, this is a pretty neat feature of go that i really really like um, they have built into their range based for loops the pythonic enumerate so this is the equivalent of in python when you uh, go for you know sort of i comma e in enumerate and then your data structure it basically binds the index of each of the elements that you're destructuring out of your data structure uh, and gives it to you. And so when you don't need the index, you can just use the underscore. Um, but uh, many times you do need the index when you're using this range-based for loop. So that's a pretty neat thing that Go has made. And I wish C++ and Java had something similar like that. Python is the only language of the, the four that we're currently looking at that can do something similar to what Go does here. And at the very end, we just output the sum. So the last thing to talk about is the time complexity for this problem and because we're looping through um, our n toys and then our m boxes, the time complexity is going to be big O of n plus m. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.